Welcome, let's introduce the idea of a limit in mathematics. So the way that we can think about limits is the idea of approximating a value as we are approaching a destination. And the key word in this idea, it is the word of approaching. In limits, we're not too concerned about what is happening exactly at a location. What we are concerned about is what is the value that we are approaching as we start getting closer to that destination. So let's illustrate this idea. Let's consider the graph below and let's approximate the value of this function in the location of x equals 5. So here we have our destination. The destination is of a value of 5. And we will start by describing the notation that we can use to describe this situation. Instead of writing the whole word limit, we're just going to abbreviate with LIM. And underneath LIM, we will write down the destination, which in this case, we want to approximate the value as we start getting closer to 5. But underneath LIM, we're going to write an X and an arrow pointing to the right, indicating we are approaching. And on the right hand side of the arrow, we're going to write down a 5. So what this is saying is we're going to look at approximation as the value of X is getting closer to 5. And after LIM, we need to define the function that we are analyzing, which in this case, let's call this function f of x. So now in our graph, let's identify the destination, which is the x value of 5, which we have here. Now let's look at the graph and let's see what is the y value when x is equivalent to 5. Which it seems to be the value of 4. And I'm writing a little question mark because there's one thing that we need to check. We have to check that we are approaching this y value from both directions, the direction on the left and the direction on the right. So now let's see what is the y value that we are approaching as we start choosing values of x's that are approaching x equals 5 from the left. As we approach x equals 5 from the left, and if we follow the curvature of this graph, notice that we're also approaching the y value of 4. The way that we're going to write this down is the limit of this function of f of x. As x approaches 5 from the left, and to indicate the direction from the left, we need to write a little negative on top of the value. So now let's check if we have the same destination as we approach the value of x equals 5 from the right. So if we follow the curvature of this graph, as the x values are getting closer to 5 from the right, we are also approaching the value of 4. And the way that we're going to write this down is by saying the limit of the function of f of x as x is approaching 5, but now we need to put a little plus on top of 5 to indicate the direction coming from the right which we saw that it was equivalent to 4. What we have shown is that if we approach the destination of x equals 5 from the left, we are approaching the value of 4. And we approach the same destination from the right, we're also approaching the value of 4. When you are approaching the same value from both directions, then the limit of the x value of 5, it is the value that they both approach, which in this case is 4. But by definition, for us to say that a limit exists, we have to show that the value that we approach from the destination from the left and the value that we approach from the destination from the right, they agree with each other. And whatever value they agree, that is what we define the limit of that function, the value that we are approaching. We can also show the same result by using a table of values. So within this table of values, we are choosing some numbers that are very close to 5 
from the left. And we are also choosing some values that are close to 5 from the right. So notice that from the left, as we start getting closer to 5, my Y value is actually getting closer to 4.16. And as I choose some numbers that are getting closer to 5 from the right, my Y values are getting closer to 4.16 as well. And I think it's fair to say that the value of 5, it is a number between 4.99 and 5.001. And therefore, the Y value that we are approaching, it is some number between 4.1644 and 4.1691, which I think is fair to say that that value is 4.16. So when we actually use the table of values, we obtain a more precise approximation. So now we can be more precise with our previous result. Instead of saying that the limit approaches 4, we can actually say that it's approaching 4.16, because from the left, we are approaching 4.16. And because on the right, we're also approaching 4.16. Let's take a look at another scenario. So now let's consider the graph on the left. And let's say that we want to find out the limit as we start getting closer to the destination of negative one. If we call this function f of x, then the way that we are gonna write this down is by saying we wanna find out the limit of the function f of x as x, it get closer to the value of negative one. But one thing to notice is that at the destination that we wanna find the limit on, we have a hole in the graph. Does the limit exist at this destination? Remember that the idea of a limit is not to know what is happening specifically at the destination at x equals negative 1. The idea of the limit is what value are we approaching as we start getting closer to the destination. So now let's take a look at both directions that we need to consider the direction of approaching negative 1 from the left and the direction of approaching negative 1 from the right. If we follow the curvature of this graph from the left-hand side, getting closer to negative 1, notice that we are getting closer to the y value of 2. So we can say that the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left, so we're going to write a little negative of f of x, is equivalent to 2. And if we follow the curvature of this function from the right-hand side, getting closer to negative 1, notice that we're also approaching the y value of positive 2 as well. So we can say that the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right hand side, so we're going to write a little plus, is also equivalent to 2. So what we have shown is that if we approach the value of negative 2 from the left, we approach the y value of 2. And that's the same value that we approach if we do it from the right hand side. We're also approaching the y value of 2. And because both directions agree on the destination, then we can say that the limit is the value of this approximation, which is equivalent to 2. So now let's clarify some common mistakes. Maybe you might say, well, I can see that when x is equivalent to negative 1, my evaluation, it's at 1. We might have a hole at the y value of 2, but I do see that my function has a closed circle at the y value of 1. And that is true. If we would have gotten this function and we would have evaluated a negative 1, the y value is 1. But remember that under limits, we're not too concerned about what's happening at negative 1. What we are trying to analyze is what y value are you approaching as you get closer to negative 1. We don't want to know what is happening specifically at negative 1. But what we want to know is what's happening as we approach the destination of negative 1 from the left and as we approach negative 1 from the right. 
let's take a look at one more scenario. So given the graph on the left, let's say that we want to identify the limit at the location of x equals negative 4. The way that we will write this down is by saying that we are interested on taking the limit of this function, let's call it f of x, as x is approaching negative 4. If we want to find the limit at the destination of negative 4, then we need to identify two directions that we can take. We can approach negative 4 from the left, and we can also approach negative 4 from the right. If we follow the curvature of this function, and we start getting closer to the x value of negative 4 from the left, notice that we are approaching the y value of 2. So what we can say is that the limit of this function as x is approaching negative 4 from the left, don't forget about this little negative to indicate direction, it's equivalent to 2. And if we follow the curvature of this function, as we approach the value of negative 4 from the right, notice that we are approaching the value of y equals 3. So we can say that the limit of this function of f of x, as x is approaching negative 4 from the right, don't forget about that plus to give direction, is equivalent to 3. And now notice that we have a problem, because now if we approach it from the left, we are getting closer to the value of 2. And if we approach it from the right, we are approaching the y value of 3. Both directions do not agree on the same destination. And if we ever have this scenario where both directions don't agree on the same destination, then we will say that the limit at this specific point, which in this case is x equivalent to negative 4, does not exist. Which sometimes we can abbreviate it by D and E. For a limit to exist, the value that we approach from the left should be equal to the value that we approach from the right. So now let's address a common mistake. If we take a look at x being equivalent to negative 4, if we evaluate this function at negative 4, the output will be equivalent to positive 2. Then therefore the limit is equivalent to 2. And this is totally wrong. Because when we're thinking about limits, we're not too concerned about what is going on exactly at the value of negative 4. What we are concerned is, what are you approaching as you start getting closer to x equals negative 4? And we have shown that the value that we approach from the left, it's not the same as the value that you approach from the right. Hello. If you would like to continue learning about mathematics, you can check out the videos on the left.